I'd like to show you how the star job XML converter works. The job XML converter is intended for importing both conventional and RTK GPS data from controllers that are either Trimble branded or Spectra Precision branded. So Survey Pro and uh, Trimble controllers will allow you to export a job XML and we can use the job XML converter to bring the observations into StarNet. There are two ways of accessing converters. If I look in the input menu and if I have a dedicated license for job XML on my network or my local license then I can launch the converter right from here. Or if I have StarNet Pro or Ultimate which includes all of the converters in a single license you have to go in here and find the microsurvey folder and launch the job XML converter. I'll launch it externally. And here it comes up. Here we go. So this allows us, just as with the other converters, to browse to define our input file and browse to define our output file. So I'll click on Browse, and I'm going to my Desktop Materials folder, and I've got a job XML file called RTK and Conventional. I'll click on Open. Now you want to define the output location, which you need to remember so you can later add it to your StarNet project. And in this case, I'm going to put it in the Materials folder because it's in the same place as this job XML exercise file. So I'll save that. Now, um, not too many options to work with. In terms of GPS observations, you can select which classes of observations that you want to include. I'm going to include all. And the only other decision that you want to make here is you want to ask the converter whether it wants to read the um, conventional observations from the all observations section or from the average observations section, depending on what your field procedures were. I'll show you what the difference is. All observations will give you every observation and you'll let StarNet do all of the averaging and putting them together. So I'll turn that option on first and we can go straight to import. Here I get a message of what's been imported and I can click on OK. And now notice that the view button is no longer disabled. I can open it up and I can view the result in a notepad editor. So here's the section where all of the conventional observations are listed and what you'll find is that you've got uh, redundant observations on some points within each of these setups and you've got a mix of phase two as well as phase one observations. They'll all be treated as a single uh, set of observations by StarNet. Further down we can see that we've also got some RTK data where uh, RTK vectors have been imported and uh, we're bringing in all classes of measurements. I'll close that up and I'll just change this, op this option here so that you can see how things are a bit different now. Now it's going to read from the average observations section of the job XML file. So I'll do a quick overwrite and now let's view and we'll see what's different. So now you see that you've got less observations and uh, you might remember uh, with the previous example we had more than one observation on point 120. Uh, now we don't. Now it's actually been been averaged and we can see that everything's or those two observations are now summed up by this one averaged observation. To complete this exercise I'm going to switch over to the all observations and I'll redo that import. Okay that's done. I am now finished with the converter so I will close it up. The only thing to be careful to note is where has this file been created because I'm going to need to know that in the next step. So I know that it's in my desktop materials folder. So I'll close it. Now what I've done is I've opened up your exercise project and actually I'll close it and I'll reopen it just so you can see where it is. So I'll go to open project and we're in the 23 job XML project. So if I double click on the first data file what you'll find is I've had to give StarNet a known position so that it can 
can compute this whole RTK and traverse data. And I actually copied it out of the Java XML file where the latitude and longitude of one of the stations was listed. So I've written it as a pH record, and so that means it's the latitude and longitude and, and ellipsoidal height. That's what the H means. And I've held them as fixed. I have also, in preparation for this, assigned an appropriate coordinate system for that area, and I've assigned what units I'd like it to output as US feet in this case. I've not assigned a geoid. Okay, and so the last step is I want to add the file that we just created. So I pick on the plus button and I browse into onto my desktop, my materials folder, RTK and conventional that. Pick on open, and so you'll notice how that one is now added to my existing selection of data files, and there's all the observations. Now, if I want to see if this will work, I can pick on adjust network, and it's going to take that one constraint point that I set here, and it's uh, you can see that it's tying in all of the conventional observations, and also over here we've got a series of GPS observations. And so everything's computed. What you'll find here is the error factor is not acceptable, and that's because I don't know what the instrument settings are, so I haven't configured the instrument settings under the project options. But at this point, we've got something we can work with. Thanks a lot for your interest.